creator and sustainer of all things and all people. You are the source of all wisdom and light. Enlighten our minds to receive your guidance so that you may lead us into true wisdom. May all that we say and do in the service of the county, whether as elected member or as an officer, be in accordance with your will and for your good of your people. Amen. Evacuation procedure. In the event of having to evacuate the council chamber, would everyone leave by the two exits of the rear of the chamber? Uh, officers will be on hand to assist anyone with uh, a disability. Mobile phones. May I ask all members who have mobile phones with them to ensure that they are switched off and will not disturb the meeting? Thank you. Agenda item one, to elect a chairman. Uh, I will invite nominations. Uh, Nick Rushton. Uh, could I move uh, Councillor Licorice? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Another, <laughs> a great start, Chairman. I, I'm sorry you've done a good job. Can I move Councillor Janice Richards? <laughs> Thank you. Simon Golden. Thank you, Chair, for that little slip-up by the leader. Um, I am very happy to support uh, that proposal on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group uh, to support Janice's nomination for Chairman of the County Council. Uh, Janice is an experienced County and Borough Councillor, and we've heard that she comes from the post uh, of Chairman, having already served as Mayor of Hinckley uh, and Bosworth. This experience will stand her in good stead for the many civic duties she will very soon be embarking upon. And with the support of Tony, who I know will be a tower of strength for Janice in the weeks and months ahead. Now, I know that Janice is a great supporter of our armed forces. And when she was mayor, she personally organised a number of civic events in support of the Army Benevolent Fund. Her fundraising has also helped other communities and international charities including an orphanage in India and, I understand, a school in Fiji. This kind of proactive work illustrates that Janice has the vision and drive and that will help her very much in her new role. Janice is an active uh, member of her local community, having worked to support local businesses and campaigned to improve local facilities for residents. I understand, Chairman, that she was involved uh, in a very big campaign in Earl Shilton to retain the public toilets in that part of Leicestershire. A very important public service uh, and well done for keeping that going. Uh, this has helped to make her a popular figure and now as Chairman of the County Council she has the opportunity to represent the County Council across the county of Leicestershire where I'm sure she will soon prove to be an equally popular and respected as our first citizen. I'm sure that Janice has much to offer the County Council's civic office on behalf of my group, I would like to wish her every success in her new role. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Simon. Nick. Yeah, uh, thank Thanks very much uh, for that, Simon. Uh, as, as the leader of the Conservative group, we're proud to nominate uh, Janice as our Chairman of the County Council. Uh, members will know that Janice has a strong civic pedigree, having already served as the Mayor of the Borough of Hinckley and Bosworth in 1516. This was followed immediately by a year as vice chairman and obviously now a year as chairman, so uh, she's well trained. Uh, Janice first entered politics in 2007 as a district councillor representing the Earl Shilton Ward, which is a position she still holds. In 2009, she was elected to the county council to represent Earl Shilton and is now serving in her third term of office. I'm not making a particular, particular political point here, but Janice increased her majority in Earl Shilton in the recent uh, elections, which is largely based, in my opinion, uh, not only on her being a Conservative, but also her personal appeal and popularity in the local area. And whenever I have been there with Janice, she certainly does have the respect of the whole uh, of, of Earl Shilton and you know, normal people who 
personally, I wouldn't expect to support her. The Conservatives do certainly support Janice, so I think she's done an incredible job down there, not only as a Conservative member, but on a personal basis as well. Um, Janice is an experienced uh, county councillor. She sat on the police authority, chaired the former Children's and Young People's Overview Scrutiny Committee. She's also served as a member of the Environment and Transport Overview and Scrutiny Committee. And she represents the County Council on the Alderman Newsom's Educational Foundation and the Hinkley Town Centre Partnership. Janice, as I've said, is very active in the Earl Shilton Division, where she supports the town team and business forum and the Earl Shilton in Bloom team of volunteers. Also, if you didn't know, before Janice retired, she also ran a very successful hairdressing business in, in Earl Shilton. And she's also a member of the Rambling Club and a member, uh, I'm sure you all know Janice is a Christian woman, of the local Methodist church. Uh, during her term of office, uh, Janice will be supported by her husband, Tony. Now, Tony is not only her husband, he's her best friend, he's her campaign manager, and he does a lot for Janice. And I think without Tony, Janice uh, may well, 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 she'll be even better at the job with, with Tony's support. And Tony has told me just before the meeting, he is willing to uh, not go and see Leicester City when evening matches is on. He's going to give his ticket to his daughter so he can support <laughs> Janice. So I thank Tony, Tony for his previous work uh, when she was chairman of Hinkley Bosworth. His work he's done this year and certainly the, uh, the work he's going to have to do next year. So thank you very much, Tony. And uh, uh, well done, Janice. You certainly deserve this nomination. Thank you very much, Nick. Um, can I invite Janice to come forward now and sign the a declaration of office. I, Janice Richards, of 92 Station Road, Earl Shilton, in the county of Leicestershire, having been elected to the office of chairman of the Leicestershire County Council, do hereby declare that I take the said office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties thereof, according to the best of my judgment and ability, dated the 17th of May, 2017. I would like to offer my sincere thanks to members of the County Council for electing me as the, as the 43rd Chairman of Leicestershire County Council. It is a tremendous honour to have this opportunity to act as first citizen of the County of Leicestershire and is one I intend to embrace wholeheartedly in order to continue the good work of my predecessors. I would like to offer my thanks to Bill for his service as Chairman of the County Council over the last 12 months. It has been a pleasure to support him with his official engagement and I would wish to take this opportunity to acknowledge the service that both Bill and Kim have given to the County Council and our wider Leicestershire community during their term of office. As I look ahead to my own term of office as Chairman, I will do whatever I can to enhance the civic life of the county and I will endeavour to uphold the dignity of this civic office and the respect it enjoys throughout Leicestershire. I am looking forward to a busy civic diary of official engagements that I will be tending on behalf of the County Council. I will welcome the support of members of this Council on these civic occasions and I do hope that you will be able to accept my invitations in due course, some of which I will highlight in my announcements later. 
During my year, I will be doing what I can to support a local charity established in memory of Joe Humphreys. Joe was 14 when he collapsed while jogging within two minutes of his home. In fact, 12 fit and healthy people die every week across the UK with no prior symptoms or warnings. And this inspired close family members and friends to set up the Joe Humphreys Memorial Trust. The Trust promotes education and training for young people and those who live and work with young people into how to react to unexpected life-changing situations. They also seek to inspire young people to fulfil their potential and develop their talents. I'm pleased to say that I will be supported in my year of office by my husband, Tony, and his personal support is something I value enormously. I'm also looking forward to working with Ozzy O'Shea, who will be taking over the reins from me as Vice Chairman. I'm sure that we will work together as an effective team to cover as many civic duties as we can. And so, from your incoming Chairman, thank you for your support, and I look forward to working with all, both in this chamber and beyond. Thank you. I call on Nick Rushton now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman, and congratulations. Okay. Uh, a few words on, uh, on Bill. Uh, Bill knew to expect a busy year when he took the job of Chairman, and so it has turned out with many official engagements attended across the county during his year. He has attended some of these events alone, but in the main he has been supported by his loyal cons consort, Kim. For the past year, both Bill and Kim have had to give up their evenings and weekends, uh, put on their glad rags and uh, entertain or represent this council. So thank you, Bill. This is a big commitment for anyone, so how Bill and Kim have found time to sell a couple of houses in order to buy a new home together, <laughs> renovate a villa in Turkey, and are planning to open a re restaurant in Bronson Astley is pretty impressive. So I think uh, even when you've finished, Bill, after today, you'll have uh, plenty to do in the coming year. Uh, there have been many uh, visits to community groups and schools and attendance at formal services and parades, meeting with young people, the civic community, charities and voluntary groups, and people of other faiths and cultures. And as you know, Bill, we value that work uh, highly in, in this council. Throughout uh, his programme, his easygoing and personal style has done much to build new and lasting relationships while presenting the County Council in the best possible light. I know I speak for us all when I say the members and officers of the County Council have valued the work carried out by Bill and Kim in the name of the County Council. <clears throat> the office of the County Council, unfortunately, is not immune to budget reductions, and this has meant a more compact hospitality programme. But Bill, by prioritising, he and his team have been able to continue much of the value, value tradition of hosting civic events at County Hall. It has still been possible, for instance, for Bill to host events for the armed forces and veteran communities, for talented young sportsmen and volunteers. These events have benefited from Bill's relaxed style of hosting um, and immediately put guests uh, at their ease. I think this is essential when you deal a lot with young people, and uh, you've, you've brought that to, to the job, Bill, and, uh, <coughs> and I know you've enjoyed it. Uh, Bill will have his own, own highlights, but I'm sure I would have thought that the processing into the cathedral uh, for the Royal, uh, Royal Maundy service which, uh, in Leicester, which was the last uh, cathedral which the Queen hadn't visited, uh, Bill was there, must be one of his highlights. W one of my highlights I attended with Bill was when the uh, train uh, came into Rothley Heritage Railway Centre. I was standing with Bill uh, and... Uh, Prince Charles jumped off the train and he's full overall, <laughs> didn't he, Bill? And, and, and shook our hand. It was really quite good and it's a fantastic uh, event that was down there. I've mentioned that the chairman's diary involves meeting uh, young people and I know this has been a particular priority for Bill as a great supporter of the Prince's Trust and other events where young people are centre stage, such as our own Children of Achievement Awards, the Lord Lieutenant's Awards, and the Go Gold Performance Sports Programme. This support for young people was illustrated perfectly at Bill's County Service when the local scouts, guides, cubs, brownies all turned out to provide a, gu a guard of honour as Bill entered the church at Broughton Astley. It was absolutely packed, wasn't it, Bill? It was amazing. 
That so many uh, co local community representatives were also there says much of Bill's following in the community. His county service also stood out as being one of the first civic events attended by our new Bishop of Leicester, uh, Martin Snow. I'm sure that everyone will agree that Bill and Kim have represented the County Council with dignity and sincerity throughout a very successful year. While I'm sure Bill will miss his civic role and all the meals that go with it, Bill, <laughs> but he'll be ready, ready for a well-earned rest and having more time to spend with Kim as they embark on the next chapter of their lives together. I wish you both well with, with all your plans and uh, looking forward to an invite to the restaurant, Bill. Uh, I know that I speak for all members when I thank you most sincerely for the way you've undertaken your civic duties uh, on our behalf. Your service to the County Council and to the Leicester community is much appreciated by all elected members here, Bill, and you can both look forward with great pride and satisfaction on your term in office. So, finally, Bill, thank you very much indeed. You've done a great job. Mr. Galton. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to add my personal thanks and those of uh, my group to Bill for his year of chairman. Uh, but Bill and I uh, not only serve here, but we serve on the District Council in Harborough. In fact, we've uh, I referred to this before, um, gone beyond the call of duty when meetings have gone on past midnight down there. And I've said to Bill it's long time since we really needed to get home but we were still there, weren't we, Bill? Um, now, we've heard about your relaxed and personal style as the chairman, which has been evident to all members during the course of this year. And from this side, I can confirm that your chairmanship in this chamber has been fair, good-humoured, and we're all grateful for that. The role of chairman outside this chamber represents ceremonial tradition, and that is why so many organisations wish to invite the chairman to their events regardless of the size of the organisation, the type of event, having the chairman attend provides a real sense of occasion and civic pride. People know they are at a special occasion if the chairman is there in his chain of office. This requires a chairman who doesn't tire of meeting people, shaking hands, public speaking, speaking buffets, dinners, uh, presenting certificates, cutting ribbons, and so on and so on. And Bill, with the support of Kim, you have done that absolutely to the best of your ability and with a great smile and affable charm. Uh, and that, I think, has helped to make you a popular chairman. Now, there's one issue I would like you to clarify today, Bill, and that's what was the situation with this bottle of wine? I'll tell you about that. <laughs> a bottle of wine. I'll tell that, you about that. It was for an auction, to be used in an auction for the charity, the chairman's charity at Harbour, yeah. provided a House of Commons bottle of wine. <laughs> When it came to the auction, it had disappeared. <laughs> and the story is, Bill, you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame you for that either. Um, but, but you can clarify that, I'm sure, when you speak. Um, uh, like David Snart uh, before you, uh, Bill, you had a, a, an existing relationship with the Leicester Children's Charity in Maplethorpe. In fact, Bill is a trustee and is someone who benefited firsthand from a holiday in Maplethorpe when you were a lad. And so it's no surprise that you adopted the Holiday Centre and chose it as your charity for the year. And I know that Bill and David together hosted a meeting between the Holiday Centre and the Hypnos beds. And this has led to an agreement whereby Hypnos will be supplying new beds uh, and mattresses to the centre. So the future young holiday makers will be having a great night's sleep uh, as well as a great day, hopefully, if the weather permits, on the beach. In addition to this practical support for the charity, you've also raised £4,500 for this excellent cause. And that's a big achievement. I know that Bill would be the first person to say that he's benefited enormously from his support that he's received from Kim throughout the year. I'd like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to Kim and your role and the time uh, that you've put in to make it so successful and your energy and good humour uh, and to make the civic partnership such a, such a success. Uh, I'd like to conclude by expressing the thanks of my group for everything, Bill and Kim, that you've done for the County Council over the past 12 months. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call on Dr. Hyman. Thank you. <clears throat> um, 
May I welcome you into your new role Thank and you hope much. you have a very enjoyable year. Thank uh, you. I would also like to take this opportunity on behalf of the Labour Group uh, to add our heartfelt thanks to Bill for his year as Chairman. Colleagues here have already paid tribute to Bill's hard work in representing the County Council on civic occasions and at many more local community events and I'd like to add my appreciation for this work which has helped to ensure that this Council is active and supportive at our grassroots in our communities as well as at the high profile civic occasions. Colleagues have already mentioned Bill's kindly and personable approach in his role and, and I can personally vouch for this. My husband and I attended a formal dinner uh, given by Bill to honour the armed forces and emergency services both of whom, as you know, we have supported for many years. And this is a dinner that's unique to our county and much appreciated by the organisations that attend. And not standing on ceremony in any way, John and I were greeted by yeah, Bill okay. and Kim and immediately put at ease, setting a tone for an evening that was enjoyable for all who attended. And we've already heard how Bill and Kim are going to be busy with their new lives together. Um, and on top of what I've heard, I understand that... Um, Bill, having stood in Broughton Astley, you're now on your fourth term on the County Council. Now, I may regret your choice of party, um, but I do know that you work hard in your community. And uh, though you will be stepping down as chairman, I'm sure that you will be throwing yourself heart and soul into the affairs of your community and acting as a true community politician, serving the residents of Broughton Astley, as you've done for the last 12 years. So on behalf of the Labour Group, Bill and Kim, um, I offer you congratulations on your year in office and I'd like to put our appreciation of your work on record. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. Thank, Thank you. you. Chairman, can I first of all start with uh, thanking uh, the Chief Executive, uh, his officers and staff, uh, especially uh, Tim Webster uh, and Katosha and Dawn Jackson, and also the two wonderful chauffeurs, Mark and Joe, for all they do, uh, over and above uh, their stations, really. They really go out to make your year comfortable and feel wanted. Okay. I've attended many functions and meetings and gatherings over the, the year, Far too many to, to mention everyone, but uh, I can pick out perhaps three of those. <coughs> I think uh, Maundy Thursday comes to mind, and uh, having the uh, opportunity and the chance to uh, not only meet the Queen, uh, went into the cathedral for the service. Um, a wonderful woman. She uh, supplied 182 uh, Maundy monies to all the people there, so that took quite some time and she was on her feet all that time. And then we moved into St. Martin's uh, house uh, for lunch. Uh, we had a few minutes to gather our thoughts. And then uh, I was uh, had the good fortune in being presented to Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. I hope the Duke didn't retire because of me. <laughs> but, uh, but it was a wonderful uh, a time. Um, the next one, uh, Simon, I, I was going to admit about the wine, Simon. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, this happened, uh, 
uh, at the uh, civic dinner uh, for um, uh, Jeanette Ackley. Jeanette's the chairman, or was chairman, of uh, Arbury District Council. And I was on the top table, and uh, I thought, that's nice, the <laughs> bottle of wine there. So uh, I topped the glass up and uh, started drinking the wine, and then uh, Jeanette got up and uh, she says, uh, we were going to have an auction of a, <laughs> a bottle of wine from... Uh, it was got the... Uh, the emblem on for the uh, Houses of Parliament. So uh, that was the most costly bottle of wine <laughs> I bought. Yeah, they did get the money for the auction. I suppose uh, uh, the, the last one and the most serious one and the one that comes to mind, I did really enjoy uh, the Princess Trust presentations and going to those. To think that um, those people, uh, people between the ages of 16 and 25, uh, they're unemployed, uh, they'd lost their way in life. Um, they took 12 at a time, and uh, they met each other, they went away for a week, they had to look after themselves, uh, it was a morale boosting uh, thing. They they did uh, charity work. They took job opportunities, um, and then they came back after the 12 weeks. And to see those people changed lives, they come and present themselves and tell us all about what they'd done, was truly amazing, and uh, a bit tear jerking at times. Really, how they gathered round each other if uh, they haven't got quite the confidence to, to speak. They all gathered around. Quite a moving time, so uh, that was a, a real opportunity, and it's a, a charity that um, I'm going to support, and uh, we, we don't need to, uh, to lose their, uh, uh, their finances and being able to, to, to carry on. Um, I think that's all I want to say, Chairman, apart from thanking all you members who elected me to the position of Chairman. I've thoroughly enjoyed the year, and thank you very much indeed. It would cost me a lot more than this, but... We now come to appoint uh, a vice chairman, and uh, Mr. Rushton. Thank you. Chairman, I intend to get this nomination right first time, <laughs> and I'd like to move a young man called Ozzy O'Shea. <laughs> Has he got to come forward, then, Mr. O'Shea? Yeah. Can we have a second to them, please? Mr. Galton. Yes, happy to do that, Chair. I'm sure uh, Ozzy will provide all the support that you will need over the coming year. Thank you very Keep much. It. Thank you. Chairman, now, now Ozzy's uh, uh, formally moved and seconded. I'm delighted to nominate Ozzy for the uh, Office of Vice Chair of the County Council. Members will know that Ozzy um, uh, comes less than 24 hours after his election as Mayor of Hinckley and Bosworth. So. This d demonstrates, uh, in my view, how Ozzy intends to throw his heart and soul into uh, civic life, because uh, he's now committed to uh, two or three years of it, but I think he'll do, do a great job. Um, 
he also has, I'm, I'm reliably informed here on this note, he's also got uh, the largest collection uh, of bling in the authority when he's doing uh, both, both jobs at once. <laughs> you have to be careful what you eat, Ozzy. Uh, Ozzy was elected to the County Council in 2013, representing Gruby and Ratby electoral divisions. He's serving his second term in office. Uh, he first entered politics, like a lot of us did, as a parish councillor in Ratby in 1996 and was elected to the borough in 2007, uh, representing Ratby, Bagworth and Thornton Ward. He's well respected in his community, and I certainly know that again from uh, going, going to places where he represents. Uh, as a county councillor, Ozzy has sat on the Children, Families and Health Overview and Scrutiny Committees, uh, Dev, Dev Control and Regulatory Board. He also represents the county council on the Bradgate and Gruby Quarries Liaison Committee. During his term in office, Ozzy will be supported by his wife of 40 years, Jenny. I know, although I don't know Jenny that well, but I'm certain I will uh, in time. They will make a great uh, civic team, uh, and they'll do all their best that, that, that he can to support you in, in your year of office, uh, Janice. So uh, I know you'll be busy, but he's assured me that if you do need help, Ozzy will step up to the plate and, and do it with you, even though on some occasions he might have to wear two chains when he goes to, <laughs> to the events, but uh, I'm sure he's man enough to carry both of them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mr O'Shea, would you like to come forward, please? Thank you. Mr Chairman, members of the County Council, I would like to thank my proposer Nick Rushton and my seconder Simon Dalton for putting my name forward for appointment as Vice Chairman of the County Council and members of the Council who have elected me to the office for the ensuing 12 months. This, is, this appointment is a great honour and I am very much looking forward to playing my part in supporting our Chairman Janice Richards in the, in the forthcoming civic year to further enhance and promote the civic life of our county. Thank you. We now come to item three, uh, Chairman's announcement. Um, Mr Peter Knight died on the 30th of March, aged 88. He served on the County Council representing the Lutterworth Electoral Division from 1981 to 1985, and again from 1993 to 1997. Mr Knight was a spokesman on the Arts, Libraries and Museum Committee he also served on the Environmental Committee and its subcommittee for Agriculture and Environmental Protection, as well as being a member of Social Services Committee. Would members please join me by standing in silent tribute to Mr Knight.
Thank you, members. I would like to uh, welcome new members of the County Council. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate all members on your election or re-election to the County Council and to offer a warm welcome to the new councillors attending their first meeting of this Council. As it is custom on the occasion of the annual meeting, I would very much like to welcome all members and Chief Officers to join me for light refreshments in the Members' Lounge immediately after this meeting. Armed Forces Day. As a prelude to Armed Forces Day, I will be hosting a flag-raising ceremony at the Standeasy Memorial on Monday the 19th of June at 10.30 a.m. All members will already have received an invitation, but I do hope that you will be able to join me. On Saturday the 24th of June, together with the Lord Lieutenant and Lord Mayor of Leicester, I'll be hosting a special service at Leicester Cathedral to mark Armed Forces Day. The service will be followed by a parade of standards, service personnel, veterans and cadets through the streets of Leicester, behind the pipes and the drums of the Seaforth Highlanders. During the course of the, sm- of the morning, there will be a military stands and displays at hum- Humberston Gate. All members have been invited to join me for this event, which promising to be a fitting tribute to our armed forces and veterans. Chairman's reception at Bow Manor Hall. I'm pleased to inform members that I shall be hosting the Chairman's annual reception at Bow Manor Hall on Thursday the 27th of July at 6.30. I do hope that members of the County Council will be able to join me and you will receive invitations and further details in due course. The centenary of the Battle of Passchendaele. Monday the 31st of July marks the start of the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Passchendaele, in which over 1,300 men from Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland lost their lives. As part of our continuing work to commemorate the centenary of the First World War, a special service will be held at Leicester Cathedral at 6pm. All members will, will be invited to join me the Lord Lieutenant and the Lord Mayor of this service, at this service. The County Service. Members are asked to make a note that the County Service this year will be held at Leicester <coughs> Cathedral on Sunday the 1st of October at 3pm. The Bishop of Leicester will be preaching and the service will be followed by <coughs> modest refreshments. All members will receive an invite, invitation in due course and I do hope that you will be able to join me in support of this annual service. I welcome to all all meetings, all visitors and guests of members, and of course, anyone who is joining us on this webcam today. We now come to item four, to receive the report of the returning officer, the Chief Executive. Thank you. Chairman, I present my report as returning officer on the persons duly elected to the County Council on the 4th of May 2017. Um, I would like to welcome all new members. Um, I know I've said it once, but I think it's it's quite a, a wonderful thing to see so many new members in the Chamber today. Item number five, minutes, um, pages 19 to 36. I move that the minutes of the meeting of the Council held on the 22nd of March 2017, copies of which has been circulated to members to be taken as read and confirmed and signed. Thank you. We now come to item number six, declaration of interests. I invite members who wish to do so to make declarations of interest in the respect of items on the agenda for this meeting. Are there any declarations? None. Agenda item number seven, questions asked under standing order. The questions and replies set out in the order paper will be taken, read and entered into the minutes. I've received notice of supplementary questions and will now call upon the relevant members to put them. Um, Mr Hunt, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, may I be amongst the first to congratulate you on your new office as is customary and, and, and the poise and uh, allure that you, uh, you. Uh, lend to the office. 
Um, with respect to my questions concerning the uh, walking and cycling um, investment strategy, uh, could I first of all thank, um, congratulate and, and welcome the new um, environment and transport uh, spokesperson on, on the cabinet and ask in uh, item three whether the expression of interest that the county council will be submitting to the department of transport in order to secure the technical support will be a joint one with the city council or will we be out on our own on this which has particular advantages for the uh, county towns thank you Madam Chairman, can I join my colleagues in congratulating you on your elevation of, of office? I think you're going to be an amazing chairman. Okay. Um, just to answer the question directly, um, I don't know. I understand that we will be submitting an expression of interest, but I'll get some clarity on that and write back to you. Thank you. Uh, Mr Hunt, you have a supplementary question on your second item. Yes, thank you very much. Um, now that we are leaving the European Union, as we're used to hearing... <laughs> Too often these days, I have to say. Um, and <clears throat> the Prime Minister has been touring the world looking for trade. It is not surprising, is it not, that uh, the Leicestershire link with Indian trade seems to have taken the back seat. And I'd ask the leader if within the substitute for that, the um, place marketing organisation that was previewed in November will have a special place for the potential trade with uh, South Asia that we have aspired to and enjoyed from time to time in the city and county. Mr. Rushton, thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. It wouldn't be a council meeting without a question from Max, and of course he's got two in at the very first council. Um, in terms of Brexit, Max, well, we're all Brexiteers now. If you believe the polls, 65% uh, of the population would now vote Brexit. As you know, I was a Remainer, but now I'm a Brexiteer, and if asked again, I would vote Brexit. Uh, on Indian trade, it's certainly very, very important. As a, an ex-colony with exactly the same legal system and things that, uh, as ours, and the amount of people that have left the Indian continent to come to uh, the United Kingdom, I think they're a very, very important trading partner. And I've often expressed the view that we look far too much at China and not enough at India and that sort of area. So I'll certainly take that up on uh, the County Council and the people of Leicester's behalf. Thank you very much, Mr. Washington. Um, Mr. Bray, thank you. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I would also like to add my congratulations to your elevation and having served under you as, as uh, Mayor of Hinckley. I know that you'll do a fantastic job. Um, yes, can I thank uh, Mr. Payne for his uh, response? And can I ask him to clarify, as he actually hasn't answered the question, whether he'll be following Derbyshire's lead and scrapping the charges? Mr. Thank you. thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Bray. Um, first of all, can I just congratulate uh, the Deputy Leader of uh, Derbyshire County Council and the leadership in general on their stonking win? Um, and it's very pleasing to see a Conservative administration back there. In terms of um, the proposal to scrap charges, I'm not sure whether they currently charge or not. What I can tell Mr. Bray is that the leadership of this council have asked me to look at this. It is something I think we'll all recognise on the doorstep during the campaign up to the County Council that people have raised questions about. And I've been tasked to look at it uh, under my responsibility, and that's what I'll do. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> we now come to item eight to receive uh, position statements. Um, over to Mr. Richard, leader, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, only a position statement from me today. Uh, it, it, is, it is in front of you. Uh, can I first of all uh, obviously welcome you, Chairman, uh, and congratulate mem new members on their election uh, to the County Council. And even though some of the ones we, that aren't here were defeated by, uh, by us, I thank them for, the, for their work that they did uh, whilst they were members. Uh, can I welcome Dr. Einan to her post as Labour Group Leader? I know Dr. Einan from her work at North West Leicestershire. And of course, congratulations to Simon, who seems to have been leader of the Liberals uh, since we had dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can I thank uh, the, uh, all, all the staff involved in the election, from the chief, who was chief returning officer, right down through all the deputy returning officers, which I think 
uh, were the uh, district chief executives. I think they, they, did a good, they did a good job. There was the odd complaint that I did hear, John, things like, why when they verify the votes at 9.30 did we have to wait till 11.30 to count them? I said that I think that's because we wanted them all counting at the same time, but if I make that point now, you, you'll, you'll hear it. Uh, can I just point out that uh, no chief officers here uh, for today? Uh, I don't think they need to sit here every time we have a full county council meeting. They can watch it on the web. They are highly paid people, and I think they do a lot, lot better job in the office <laughs> running their departments. What we have said is if me lead members need their chief officer here, they will come along. If something arises where we need a chief officer, they can be summoned. But I think it's a waste of time, in my view, having a whole phalanx of chief officers uh, lined up there. <laughs> Uh, Henri Alderman, I did try, if I'm honest, to get the Henri Alderman uh, invested, I think is the expression, today, but because it's a civic day, but there's a difficulty in getting the, the badges or medals, whatever you call them. But I can announce that the Henri Alderman for the July meeting will be Dave Houseman, Peter Lewis, David Snart, and, and Graham Hart. So uh, they'll be back here in July to pick up their uh, uh, medals. Uh, can I thank the uh, people of Leicestershire for rewarding us with, with an increased majority? Uh, obviously, we did well against the Labour Party. Uh, we did less well against the Liberals, but we intend to rectify that over the next four years and uh, see if we can uh, replace some Liberals with Conservatives uh, in, in four years' time. As I said, the, uh, uh, the, fu the, future, still, still the future still remains uncertain. Austerity continues. We're in the midst of a general election. We're getting manifestos out uh, over, the, over the past few days. We've had the Labour one, which takes us back to the 70s uh, a week or so ago. We've got the Liberal one today, which I've not had a, a full chance to look at. And I'm reliably informed that, that ours, is out, ours is out tomorrow. Uh, uh, that's not a point of order. No, that's not a point of order. Uh, Mr Bill, I have just said it is not a point of order. Please sit down. Sit down, please. I'm doing something. Can you sit down, Mr. Bill, please? Chairman, thank you very much. I know I'm doing something right if I've managed to annoy David Bill in the first five minutes. Um, so, uh, obviously, now, now we're, now we're the, uh, the majority group again. I do promise that, uh, obviously, our manifesto will drive our agenda, but we will do our best to represent all people of Leicestershire, uh, whether, whether they voted for us or not, uh, and anybody who has any complaints or needs uh, help to contact the Cabinet member, and we will deal with them as though, uh, as, as an elector of, of the county, not on a party political basis. Um, we've still got challenges, as I was alluding to earlier, on going ahead. Uh, they will be difficult, but we'll wait and see who's in charge uh, after the general election. I'm certain it'll be us. I have had a private letter handwritten from SAG uh, as the it comes in as a prospective parliament, can, parliamentary candidate for Bronzegrove at the moment, but it, it was a very supportive letter, and I do hope Saj is uh, repositioned back in uh, his, his post at DCLG because I've got a good relationship with him. Also, nice phone calls from Marcus, uh, Marcus Jones, good supporter, and of course he's, he's just across the border from Hinkley Bosworth, so he's, he's a good chap, to, good chap to have on side. Uh, I've also undertaken, I've phoned all the upper-tier leaders, so that's the city mayor, obviously, John Collins in uh, Nottingham, plus the three uh, new county leaders, that's Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire and Lincolnshire. Uh, John contacted the leader of Derby for me because I don't know him so well because they, they tend to change quite often because they're on a third or third election, so you never quite know where you are with Derby. But <clears throat> we're all going to meet up on the 26th of May to see what sort of things we can uh, do to make sure the East Midlands doesn't get forgotten now we've got an elected mayor. Uh, for the West Midlands, albeit he's one of ours, we just need to make sure that uh, we, we, we champion the East Midlands because uh, that's where we represent. <clears throat> General election coming up, as I've said, uh, Brexit, difficult, complicated. Uh, obviously, as a Conservative, I'm an avid supporter of Theresa. In my view, she's the only one who can deliver a, a, a good Brexit for us, and I urge everybody in Leicestershire uh, to vote for her. Uh, on Her Majesty's uh, Queen's visit to Leicester, I, I, I wasn't there. 
Uh, Bill was there. It was really good to see her there. Uh, it, it generated uh, lots of publicity, in fact, global publicity. Uh, and, and while I'm on the visit, obviously, of Her Majesty, I want to pay particular thanks to a chap who I think we all know, and that's Tim Webster. Now, Tim, Tim is highly respected, not only by myself, but by all members, but really across the piece uh, in the county and, and in the city where he does a lot of work for their civic events. He's also, when I went to meet Prince Charles down at the Rothley Railway Museum, he's actually highly respected by the people who organise the Royal Household and Prince Charles's <coughs> visit. So things that he puts in place, they leave alone because they know he does a good job with it. And we are actually very, very lucky to have him. But also we're very fortunate, and that's down to us all, that we do pay for Tim and pay for him to run uh, and help Lady Greta with her job. A lot of counties do not do that, and it's something which I said to my group we should be proud of, that we have a civic affairs department and not only help the chairman and the vice chairman, but uh, Lady Greta in particular, who has been absolutely tireless in her role as Deputy Lord Lieutenant and, in my view, will take a, a, a great deal of replacing. Another thing we should be proud of, again, uh, and Tim does a lot of work with it, although it's due to the commitment of all members here, is the work we do with our armed services, active serving people, retired serving people, the stuff we've done on the, uh, the, the, the memorials and the war graves. It's something which we should all be very, very proud of. So uh, that concludes my uh, position statement. I hope it's not been too controversial, apart from David Bill. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bill, would you like to say a few words then now, please? No, not now, Mr. Galton. Oh, sorry, m sorry um, um, uh, Mr. Galton first, and then I'll come back to you after. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, I think you said it first. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, Chairman, I shall reply to the, the leader's position <laughs> statement. Um, he started off by saying that... Um, I'm not sure what point he was really trying to make that uh, I'd been here a long time, if the word he used, dinosaur. Well, of course, I've, I've survived three previous Conservative leaders, one who left under a big cloud, who are probably best off mentioning today. So we'll see. We'll see whether I survive uh, the next one over the next one. Oh, yes. I, I, shall, I shall continue. I shall continue to provide strong and stable leadership of my group. I hope he is able to do the same with his enhanced uh, group. But seriously, uh, Chairman, uh, I, I welcome that uh, ministers felt the need to, to call the leader uh, on, on after May the 5th, and we're now clearly on first-name terms. So I hope that that's going to mean more progress is going to be made with regard to getting a fairer funding deal for Leicestershire. He's now got the telephone line open. I assume he kept the numbers, stored them in his mobile phone, and he'll now be able to ring them back on a regular basis and keep pressing for a fair funding deal, because without that, as he recognises elsewhere in his speech, uh, that is going to mean more cuts. Um, now, he also then talks about uh, the, uh, the Transformation Board and the work that's done there. Uh, both the Labour Group and ourselves left there because we uh, felt that it wasn't making the progress and it really was just um, important as it is, uh, ability for officers uh, to present information. It wasn't really an opportunity to influence uh, the transformation process and put ideas forward and alternatives. Now, if he's saying that we could have, uh, get rid of it and put something else in place, then we'll look at it. But as it stands at the moment, uh, under its terms of reference and the fact it meets uh, uh, in such a limited way, I think it should be open to any councillor to come uh, and, and have an input into that process and if anyone's got any good ideas about efficiency and saving money um, but as it, it stands at the moment I, I don't really believe it's achieving uh, much Nick and I think you need to have a look at its, its terms of reference. Actually I think scrutiny is a better way of, of, of um, looking at the transformation process and seeking to make changes. Now he moves on to talk about um, things that are going to be uh, pressed forward and one initiative is obviously the introduction of the speed cameras. So can he tell us whether we've yet received a response uh, to the letter that the Director of Environment and Transport has sent seeking the government's agreement to the trial? Because 
the moment, or before the election, that was not forthcoming. There had been no reply. In particular, he will recall the request that we are able to retain the penalty charge income. Because if we can't do that, I don't think it's going to be sustainable going forward. If we've got to pay for all these cameras and service them and then simply hand the money to the Treasury, uh, it's not going to work as a way of sustaining itself. So can he tell us, has, did the government before they left office reply or are we still waiting for that? And meetings uh, with regional leaders uh, is obviously uh, important, but it's, it's hard to see how that fits with the statement Nick, you made a few weeks ago about leaving the LGA. Now, I know effectively you put them on notice for change. You talked about uh, the pesky influence of the, of the pesky district councils. I think it was something like that. It might have been something more insulting to our colleagues in districts. Uh, and as a district councillor, as you are and, and as I am, I was a bit surprised about that because we should be working with those uh, colleagues at the districts uh, for change. Yes, the LGA does need to be more effective, but it's the only show in town for having an influence on whatever governments uh, run in the country and making the voice of local government heard. So I hope he's going to uh, uh, rethink that. And I know Lord, uh, well, I can't remember his first name, of Spalding, uh, is Lord Porter, yes, Gary Porter, is going to uh, talk you out of that, or at least you're going to reach an agreement on some change. Um, now, finally, I just mentioned the, you know, you, you're almost uh, ramping up um, uh, the issue of Brexit there, aren't you? We're talking about that. Well, of course, some of us haven't changed our mind uh, on that. We've been consistent. We haven't flip-flopped and moved from one side to the other. And, of course, there are some good conservative politicians in Leicestershire that have also taken that position. And some of them are quite close uh, uh, to colleagues in this council today. So, you know, I think he's on a difficult wicket on that to say we're all Brexiteers now because clearly we're not. The issue now is about the terms on which we leave and the deal that we can get. That's the key issue that we need to be focusing on. So I'll leave it at that, Chair, um, and um, we look forward to the next few years. Dr. Allen, thank you. We certainly do seem to be interesting times. And I would like to join with the leader in thanking all the election staff uh, for the hard work that they put in with the county council elections and also to thank those voters who um, saw the effectiveness of a Labour scrutiny at this council and though we may be reduced in number perhaps they will respect the intensity of the work that we are going to bring here um, and that brings me to the mention of the transformation board and the idea of the 1970s. I remember the 1970s, they were quite good really, free education um, and actually affordable accommodation. Um, and there were concerns from my colleagues in public health that we are actually moving back to the 1930s with inequality. And this council has a, a great role in managing inequality across Leicestershire. And um, I am concerned, and this is why I, I wish to support some kind of transformation here at this council, that there, unless there is a political change at the top, this council will continue to be treated by Westminster as if we were in some grand game of Jenga. They are withdrawing revenue support at the bottom of the public sector while piling demands on the top. And what the leader and this council will have to deal with are increasing numbers of children of working parents living in poverty, as this council is having to consider cutting sure start centres. The leader and members of this council are going to have to deal with increasing numbers of older people in need of social care, as this council is reducing their eligibility. We will have to work with private bus companies who are currently revising their routes to cut costs, while this council has no funds to subsidise public transport and enable people to get to work. Not only is Westminster playing Jenga with us. We are playing Jenga with the NHS. We are withdrawing the services that prevent isolation, mental ill health and social neglect and piling on demand in the form of increased admissions and delayed discharges from hospital. So, Chair, I will support calls for fairer funding of this council. But I hope that this leader will agree with me that it is now time for the public sector across Leicestershire to unite against this assault on our finances. 
And in the face of weak and wobbly decisions coming from central government, that a transformation that is called for is perhaps for strong and stable unitary authorities working strategically with our neighbours and cooperatively to support the people of Leicestershire in difficult times. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Kaufman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, may I add my congratulations to your appointment? Um, and I'd like to congratulate everybody who's got here, and in particular the leader of the Conservative group. Congratulations. The elections were great. We did all right. But later on, I will be asked to decide who should be the leader of the County Council. We're going to have a vote in a minute. And because of that and the statement that is here, there's a few questions I'd like to pose and would be grateful if the leader of the Conservative group can answer them. Um, are you aware of the reports in the local press that you referred to the Liberal Democrats as slime balls? If so, if that is so, can I ask, were you referring to the voters, the people that vote Liberal Democrat? Were you referring to the supporters, the people that support the Liberal Democrats? Are you referring to the people who are elected as Liberal Democrats? Also, do you think your comments higher the esteem of local government and local democracy in the eyes of the... Mr Kaufman, Mr. Kaufman, can you direct your questions through the chair, please? Yes, or your Chair, comments. Uh, Thank uh, you. Yes, Madam Chair. They are all through there. I'm sorry. I was watching, looking in the wrong, wrong direction. Would, um, through the Chair, the leader of the Conservative group like to take the opportunity now of withdrawing his comments and apologising to the members of the council here and to the general public. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr Hunt, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, whilst I enjoy Nick's uh, speeches most of the time, I found uh, this, this particular presentation um, certainly unusual um, and, uh, if not a little bit provocative, um, uh, uh, in his focus on the election results. Now, we're all here to represent Leicestershire. Um, I, I would, by the way, point out that uh, as far as the Labour group is concerned, we have increased our representation by 50% since 2009, and in Loughborough, we've maintained our domination uh, as far as I can remember. But th these are not the things we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss the matters that concern Leicestershire. And uh, I would like to uh, refer to two or three things which were perhaps absent in the leader's um, uh, uh, speech. One is, I think, that it's uh, due to congratulate uh, Dr. Terry Einan on becoming the Labour Group leader, yeah. the new Labour Group leader. Um, another one is to congratulate whoever was responsible for ridding us of the UKIP group, uh, <laughs> which, which was not even mentioned, although, of course, we do really know that uh, Mrs. May has taken on that mantle uh, of, you know, full and strong and stable. <laughs> and finally, um, seriously... Um, I would like to thank all those members of the council, and I'm sure he would, on my, on, on my behalf. Um, those members who have lamented the absence of Robert Sharp, who was our previous leader, and who played an excellent role in scrutiny for all the council, um, and is sorely missed. <laughs> members from all sides have, have said, not only to him, but to me and others, what a loss he is, and perhaps he will be back soon. Um, and in particular, the addition he added to the election discussion about whether or not Leicestershire and Leicester should become a unitary authority, or Leicestershire should become a unitary authority. And that's something I think we would all want to focus on somewhat over the next four years um, and uh, uh, follow it through. But thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr Hunt. Uh, Mr Bell. Thank you. To speak on what I thought was going to be a ceremonial occasion, but um, as you have called me, congratulations on your 
Thank you. The, election. Um, the point I was trying to make earlier is that it was ruled um, oh, some years ago that we would not refer to other authorities outside, outside this one. It was, I think it was actually enshrined in standing orders and enshrined in the protocol. And I thought that was what we were adhering to. So when I start hearing about the forthcoming general election, I do wonder whether that's in, is it in order to start, whether that particular protocol has been, has been set aside. And I would really appreciate uh, a written reply on that, because if we are now going to be able to refer to what we're doing at district level, or what's happening at national level, or parish level, or elsewhere, then let's all work to the same set of rules and, and, um, and we'll know where we are. And I, I, I wonder whether I ought to take exception with with Dr. Enan, when she refers to the bad old 1970s, there they were bad days, um, Madam Chairman. We had, we, we had, we had full employment. We, we had uh, an education service here in the county which was looked upon with envy the rest, across the rest of the country. We had a national health service on which everybody supported our stance. We had a manufacturing industry which made us the fourth wealthiest country in the world. They were bad days, and we must never return to it a time when we were the friends of the whole world. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Um, are there no more questions? Uh, do you want to respond, Mr. Richter? Uh, congratulations to Simon for surviving three Conservative leaders. Uh, I'm not so sure you're strong and stable, but more a compromise between the 13 different factions in your group. Um, Fairer funding uh, is, 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 certainly, is certainly a top priority for us, and that, that is one of the reasons, because I think Byron might have to spend a bit more time going down to London and seeing the CCM who have adopted our fair funding model. That's why we've provided Byron with a, I call him Chancellor, and uh, Richard Shepherd as First Secretary of the Treasury. So if Byron isn't here, we've still got someone uh, doing the local finances. So we do take it seriously. Uh, sorry you're not joining the Transformation Board, either of you two guys, but I'm sure uh, Byron will continue to run it as well as he... Uh, well, even if we reconstitute it, you might think about joining, but in the meantime, Byron will be carrying on with it, doing uh, the good work which uh, saves on back office costs to ensure that we protect frontline services wherever possible. On speed cameras, Simon, uh, no response yet. I can't imagine we'll get anyone to see about it at all until the autumn because when they come back, you've only got like uh, three weeks before they're off for the summer. It might be a new guy in charge, but we will continue uh, with our trial, and we'll, we'll see where we go uh, with it. Obviously, it would be most beneficial to us if we could persuade the Department for Transport to uh, let us have some of the money back. Um. Um, I have been looking at Mr. Rushton, and he has been looking up into my eyes as he speaks. I knew we made the right choice with you, Janice. <laughs> and any, anyway, Chairman, it's a really, really great day if I've managed to annoy two Liberals in my <laughs> opening remarks to the Statutory Council. It can only get better moving forward. Uh, on the LGA, as you know, Madam Chairman, we pay 68,000 to be a member of the LGA and a further 17,000 to be a member of the CCN. If they can persuade me that we get £85,000 worth of benefit out of it, just because we've served our notice to quit doesn't mean that we can't rejoin uh, when we like. What it means is that we can go when we want and we are not the only county council that have served our notice to quit. Uh, Essex has and Lincolnshire have. I'm sure that if we can get Paul Carter in charge of the LGA, there's a lot better future, a lot better future for us. And I would urge anybody here, and I shudder to mention district leaders, because uh, Mr. Kaufman and Mr. Bill will be really angry, but uh, if you're a district leader, please vote for Paul Carter. Um, Terry, uh, I'm afraid that uh, Chairman Terry and the Labour Party, they really are going back to the old labour of tax and spend. The only thing we can guarantee you with them is debt, instability and doubt. So I would urge people not to vote for the Labour Party in the forthcoming election, vote for strong and stable leadership and, uh, and, and vote for uh, Our Lady. 
And also, if you're a UKIP voter, you may well make fun that we've got rid of them, but I urge UKIP voters, and there are still quite a lot of them, to vote for Theresa because she is the only person that can deliver strong and stable leadership and, and a, decent, a decent deal on Brexit. Uh, I think I'll conclude with that, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, we now come to item nine, report of the Cabinet. Uh, Mr Rushton. Thank you. Can I uh, uh, move the dates of the Council meetings uh, for 17, 18, 18, 19? And, of course, the item which stands deferred, which I think has been universally accepted that 2 o'clock is a better time to start than 2.30. Thank you. Mr Shepherd. Thank you. Everybody agree? Thank you. Any against? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we now come to item 10, appointment, uh, sorry, to appoint a le the leader uh, and the cabinet. So, motion one. Mr. Rhodes, thank you. Strong and stable. Madam Chairman, it's a delight it is to see you in the chair. I hope you have a really successful year and I look thank forward you. to it. Uh, it falls to me um, with great pleasure and a great honour to uh, move that Mr Rushton be elected uh, leader of this council for the next, next year. I think the speech that he's just given, the two speeches in his report, show that he is exactly the right leader we need. Strong, stable, <laughs> tough. <laughs> the scourge of the Liberal Democrats. <laughs> And not a single Labour politician can lay a finger on him. So I have great pleasure in nominating him. Thank you. Mr Shepherd. Madam Chairman, I second each word of that. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Mr Galton, sorry. If that was a unanimous decision, or whether there was any dissent in his group with someone who's just left the room, perhaps he could clarify that point. Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes, do you want to see some spots? No. Do you want to respond? No. 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 Okay. Is, 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 that yeah. is that all agreed? agreed. Uh, those against? Motion's carried. Yeah. Motion's carried. Thank you. Motion two. Sorry, I've got, yeah. uh, mo we come to now a motion to Mr Rushton again. Thank you. Has it be noted that I propose to appoint the members named on list one attached to the order paper as members of the cabinet? Motion, yeah. Mr Shepherd, thank you. That's only All agreed, yeah. So. It's common knowledge, Nick. You, you, not any surprise that we question. Uh, whether these posts actually add value to the cabinet, um, you, you did say. I thought you were doing. Thought you were doing bag carriers now. Uh, I'm on item. Okay, I'll, I'll keep my power. To note the membership. Yeah, d uh, this is to uh, note that the, the cabinet membership. This one. Thank you. Um, all in agreement. Any against? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we come to now item B to appoint cabinet mem uh, support members. Mr. Rushton. Uh, Chairman, can I move the following members be appointed as cabinet support members until the next annual meeting of the County Council, as provided for in Article 7 of the Council's Constitution? Uh, and to preempt Simon, uh, these are essential posts, Simon. I have reduced the cabinet by two members. Uh, down from 10 to 8, saves £50,000 to the cost of democracy straight away. We, have, we are a big group, and I want to um, encourage people to... Are you to, putting your questions to, through me? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sorry. Okay. sorry. He, uh, I want to encourage people to, to learn the ropes, yeah. and I think uh, in the case of, say, um, uh, Blake's department, he is now highways, transportation, waste management, and the environment, so it's a huge department... And I think it's essential that big departments have a, a helper. 
and obviously Ivan's department is a big department and Richard's department is a big department. So where they are big departments, they have a helper and I think they're an essential part of the administration and will provide excellent service to members of the County Council. Thank you. Mr. Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, all in agreement? Agreed. Those against? Uh, carried. Uh, item C, to appoint members of the Scrutiny Commission Board and Committees. Um, Mr Shepherd, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I move that the membership of the Scrutiny Commission Boards and Committees, as set out in List 2, attached to the order paper, be approved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Are all agreed? agreed? Any against? Um, C, um, to appoint a spokesman, um, Commissioner, Mr Shepherd. Thank you. Uh, I name the members shown in the second and third list of a column of list, of list S yeah. as Conservative Commissioners of the Scrutiny Commission as shown. Thank you. Mr Charlesworth? I name the names in the fourth column of list S. Thank you. Mr Hunt? I name the members in the fifth column of this list. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we can come on now to Scrutiny Committees and Development Control and Regulatory Board. And Mr Shepherd, please. I name the members shown in the second and third column of list S as Conservative Chairman and Deputy Chairman of the Scrutiny Committees and the Development Control and Regulatory Board, as shown. Thank you. Uh, Mr Charlesworth? I name, the, sorry, um, I name the members shown in the fourth column of List S. Thank you. Mr Galton? Yes. yes, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to refer to um, the list in relation to the appointment to Chairman, um, which the Leader uh, has set out. Um, this as he knows, will end quite a long tradition of the chairman of committees uh, being appointed on the principle of proportionality. Uh, the Conservative group proposes to take all the chairs uh, of the committees. Um, that is something that previous leaders and indeed himself uh, have not done before. As I say, they've followed the principle of proportionality. Um, and... Um, Conservative group had a fairly large majority before, but nevertheless they felt that was important to follow that. Um, as I say, this seems to be the opposite of what has gone on, and I haven't seen any justification for that. I think a confident administration has nothing to fear from strong, strong and effective scrutiny, chaired by opposition uh, members of any other party other than the administration, uh, and to be able to hold that to account. That follows the principle that Parliament has, where select committees are chosen uh, with cross-party chairs, and indeed they're actually chosen by the members and not appointed by the leader. Thank you. Did you want to respond, Mr Shepherd? Yes. Oh. Uh, Mr. Madam, but as the other parties will still have their spokesmen, spokespeople in place, who will be able to attend the chairman's briefings and attend the agenda-setting conferences and between scrutiny committee meetings, scrutiny function will be discharged perfectly well. There's nothing untoward at all in the controlling group with far more numbers occupying the formal chairs and deputy chair positions. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Alina. Thank you. I'm afraid I would like to agree with um, Councillor Galton here. Though they are, in many ways, in a well-functioning scrutiny <coughs> group, uh, it is probably not that important who is entitled the chair or the vice chair as long as the spokes are there from all the opposition parties. I think there, we may be missing something here if we're not careful. It's very important when you have a large and perhaps even expanding group running a council that it doesn't fracture within itself and form internal oppositions. So I can understand why, um, feeling perhaps a little under threat, there is a need to keep one's own side happy by providing them with chairs and vice chairs. But I think that Simon Galton has a point, Chair, that having your loyal opposition scrutinising what you do is a safer position 
for the leader of this council. And so I, I would be encouraging him to take note of uh, what an experienced and long-standing commissioner has said. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rushton. But, Chairman, I mean, uh, the Chief Whip has answered uh, entirely appropriately. I, we are a big group. We have got a lot of new members, and I'd like all new members to experience senior roles in this council. And I've said to all the new members that we want, across the scrutiny piece, we want to move them all around over the four years. So a new member who, say, comes in from, say, Whittick, although he's an old member back, I don't want him just stuck in one bits. I want to move him around. I want him to experience being a deputy chair, maybe do children, maybe do adults. And I am certainly absolutely confident in my scrutiny, chairman and vice chairman, that they will provide me with strong and effective scrutiny. Thank you. Uh, Mr Hunt. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, other re regulatory bodies and Mr Shepherd. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I name the member shown in the second column of list S as Conservative spokesman of the bodies as shown. Thank you. I name the yeah. member shown in the third column. Thank you. Uh, we're coming to C. Oh, sorry, I've missed it. Oh, Mr. Hunt, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> Mr. Hunt. A moment, didn't I? If, and in the fourth column. <laughs> Thank you. C, yeah. C to a substitute. Mr. Shepherd, please. Madam Chairman, I move that the Chief Executive be authorised to make and terminate appointments to the Commission, committees, boards, and other county council bodies, not including the Cabinet in accordance with the wishes of the physical groups to whom the seat in question has been allocated, subject in the case of those bodies set out in list B to the group giving one day's notice to the executive of its wishes. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, D, to appoint church representatives to serve on the Children and Families Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Again, Mr Shepherd. Thank you. I move that Canon Carolyn Lewis be appointed as Church of England representative and Mr Gerard Hurst be appointed as the Democratic representative on the Children and Families Overview and Scrutiny Committee or other appropriate scrutiny committee dealing with education for the period ending with the County Council elections in 2021. Thank you. Second. Okay, thank you. All, all agreed? Any, any against? Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the business of the meeting. Finally, may I invite everyone to join me in the members' lounge where light refreshments will be available. Thank you very much. Oh.